Hey y'all, welcome back to the Mountain Man. So, awesome day today, because Mountain Monsters just ended. And not forever, as far as we know, but at least for season eight. Now season eight, kind of started off a little rocky, in my opinion. You know, it, I don't know, it just didn't try to be anything different than everything else that came before. Um, it really started to mock season seven in a lot of ways for me. But as it progressed, it did get better, a lot better. And then it kind of went back to being too hectic, too crazy, and you know, not enough monster hunting. And then it kind of ended off good again. So, so overall, very solid season on Mountain Monsters. I'm not gonna complain at this point. I can't believe we even have this many seasons, eight seasons. And you know what? The way it ended, I really do 100% believe that there'll be a season nine and probably a season eight or 10 as well because you know they think you want to round it off at a nice even number like that at 10 that's what i would think but you never know you know how much more stories can the same steam produce especially in the tiger valley i feel like it's getting a little dry at this point honestly i thought it got dry right at the beginning of season eight the whole tiger valley story but they added some new stuff to it you know from season seven instead of just a smoke wolf and now there's a bigfoot and now there's a grafter monster and now there's you know some other threats in there like the the juvenile fight and uh, the wing wall all oh, that was hard to do i don't know but there was a couple new things that we all gotta admit that were pretty entertaining i thought i did like season eight a lot i thought it was a great season um maybe a little lazy at some points but i think what i realized is when i was watching that last episode I think I realized that they really don't want to let go of this Tiger Valley story because they know that when they do, what will be left of Trapper, you know what I mean? Trapper will kind of be thing of the past of Mountain Monsters and they're never going to admit that. I mean, they're mine. They'll always be a part of the show. That's all I'm trying to say. But, you know, it might not be as big of a part of the story and they really want it to be. So they get rid of this story, you know, they finish it up, and they're not going to have Trapper in the story anymore. Um, I do want the story to progress, but it seems like it's kind of not, because the show writers don't really want it to yet. And it's like they're dragging each episode out. Like, I feel like season seven could have started where it did and ended here, and it would have been a complete season, and it would have been great. And they could have done the next season as more Tiger Valley mysteries. But this is now... You know, if they do make season 9, most definitely it's going to be about the Tiger Valley again. And about the dra what Driver is mining for in the Tiger Valley. And that Bigfoot. And, you know, now they got one on camera. Or at least they think. So, I really do think that it'll be about the same kind of story. You know, we'll just, just leave where this one left off, you know. That's where it'll take off. And I don't know if that's a good thing or not. I mean, I do want them to continue now that they, they're not finished it yet. But at the same time... I do kind of want something new at this point. Mountain monsters. It feels like they're, you know, trying not to make anything new in order to keep Trapper's spirit alive in the show. Now, I think they could do it in other ways, but nonetheless, you know, it. I don't know, a couple new things this season. But overall, I don't think it really accomplished too much. What did we find out in this season that we we didn't already know last season? Well, we found out a little more what Trapper was doing in the Tiger Valley. Actually, I don't even know if we... Yeah, I guess we didn't know last season that he was in the Tiger Valley. But we didn't know what he was doing there. Now we know he was drilling for oil, I guess. We still don't really know why, though. Or, like, what he found in that cave. Because what they're implying was sounding a lot like... Hard to believe, like... Trapper was mining and he mined into like a cave of monsters like that's what they were getting at they didn't actually come out and say it they didn't really say anything they just said Trapper was mining and he uncovered the gates of hell or something I don't know but I certainly would have liked to know more about that but you know Cold Straub he's the one that writes the show and Cold Straub did make an appearance in this final episode so you know, and he had some pretty big shocking evidence, which is Bigfoot on camera, as you guessed it. And it was kind of, kind of believable. 
but I wouldn't say it shocked me or anything. I could actually barely even tell. They had to replay it like three times until I finally started to see even a shadow of a Bigfoot, maybe. But anyways, y'all, so I was thinking maybe today this is going to be a long video, so sit back, relax, and get your popcorn ready because we're going to be reviewing every episode from Season 8 and analyzing each one. So if you haven't watched it yet, then maybe you should go get Discovery Plus. No, they're not spo I'm not sponsored by them, but I do think you should go get it because it is a good price. And go watch All the Mountain Monsters Season 8. Why not? It was a great season. Not as good as some. You know, Season 6, Season 5, they have more story to them, but also they're a little more far-fetched with the, the ghosts and the, I don't know, more of the, those myth mythical elements to it. But season eight was more, more laughing, more talking. But you know, it still delivered. I mean, it still had a lot to give. I think season eight. It was a good season. But after realizing that, I think they're really trying to dr drag it out. It makes me like it a little less. Because I, I do think that it was a little too slow. Like there's some things that's like, okay, what did this episode even accomplish? All they did was laugh the whole time. And it's like, well, I would have liked. A little more from this season and i think that we will get it it's just very slow because like i said we're trying to drag it out but well that's just my thoughts on the season as a whole but now i'm gonna review every episode talk about each one analyze them and might even rate them i don't know so like i said sit back relax you're watching the mountain man hoorah so basically the team decided that they're going back to the tiger valley and they're going after a Bigfoot, all right? Because, you know, last season, Uncle Barry found a Bigfoot hair, and, well, he thinks. Again, not really sure where he found that at. I guess on Willie's log. Don't know why he thinks that's a Bigfoot hair, but he does. So, <laughs> apparently, <laughs> it is one. Also, they didn't really touch on that again, going through season eight, and they never really talked about that hair again. So, probably one of the lamest um, cliffhangers they've ever done was that season seven one. This one was definitely way better how season eight ended. But, so, obviously they went back to the Tiger Valley. They were very, very excited about Bigfoot. Acting like they never went after him before. Like a bunch of two-year-old hillbillies, you know, cheering for Bigfoot and everything. Um, and, you know, there's a couple things. It was like, they're really trying to make this season more kid-friendly, I felt like. So I feel like some of the jokes were a little missed by me. Um, but Wild Bill had his little Squatch Watch and, you know, stuff like that. And then, no, I don't know, that episode didn't really accomplish much. It was just called Bigfoot or Bust, and that's really what it was. They were going after Bigfoot, and they were very excited about it. Like I said, Squatch Watch. And then we just, um, when Wild Bill's on Squatch Watch, the team realizes they hear this massive roaring sound, and that's when things start to pick up the pace a little bit. Um, and they don't know what this roar is, this mysterious roaring sound. And this this lasts through the whole season. We hear it a lot more. And so basically, um, you know, the team's out hunting in the woods. And I believe Buck was on his own. And that's when Buck got lost. So the team had to go. Well, they he didn't really get lost. The team team couldn't find him. I believe he was just hiding out at at the farm that day. What's that called, that farm? I forget what it's called. Elm Creek or something? I don't know. Um, Buck has a laughing attack from Wild Bill. So, yeah, like I said, the team's rushing to find Buck. And I believe they find another mutilated... Yeah, Buck found a mutilated... Mutilated, mutilated cow. Sorry about that. Um, I'm talking out here in the cold. <laughs> it's freezing. Because I want to have that little effect of the wind blowing. Like a hillbilly. So... Um, yeah, book finds a mutilated cow. At this point, I really can't take any more mutilated cows or pigs. This is, I think there was five or six of them this whole season. It just doesn't have the same effect on me anymore when I see them. You know, at first it was like, oh, whoa. But now, it's like, oh, yeah, okay. We get it. He likes farm animals, that old smoke wolf. Um, and then Buck finds a lost kitten. And that was this is coming into the next episode now. So the next episode... Um, I forget what it's called. I'll put it on the screen though. But Buck saves a lost kitten, and I thought that was kind of cute, that scene. I like that. 
Um, because I believe they originally think that that roaring sound is coming from the grabbing monster, but they don't realize it yet. Not until like the third episode or so. So I think they just, you know, they find Buck and the team meets together. They find some cow after birth, which is pretty gross. And <laughs> Buck almost throws up Gagan at it, at that raunchy, gross smell. Um, they have a little flashback of Trapper um, from when they heard a similar sounding roar, but it was actually in Grafton County. And that's when they start putting those puzzle pieces together and they realize that they might be going after the Grafton monster. Then the Ames team meets with another eye, or with actually with their first eyewitness, which is Terry. And Terry's a good old guy. I liked him a lot. Probably one of the better halves of the season, just seeing him. He had a, go a couple of good episodes, too. Or he was just in the spotlight, had a couple funny scenes. Jeff likes to milk the bulls. <laughs> They're really, really making Jeff seem like a queer in this season. That's for sure. And that's basically when the Ames team realizes that they are hunting the Grafton monster. And what seems that a bit like a season all about Bigfoot kind of turns into a season about the Grafton monster. But you'll see that later on in the season, that changes again, and then we get more smoke wolf action, and then it goes back to Bigfoot in the end. But nonetheless, um, Terry had quite a convincing, most convincing probably video, even more than the Bigfoot video in the end of the season, in my opinion. Uh, of the Grafton monster, and I mean, I'll put it on screen for y'all right now, but as you can probably remember, it was, you know, definitely a humpback creature. I don't know exactly if those renderings are what the Grafton monster would really look like. Probably not exactly, but he definitely has a hunchback, and he's definitely ugly. <laughs> so they even seem to have some fun. They, you know, while Bill starts clearing everything, the barn and stuff, there's a couple funny scenes in and out of there. Um, and they realize that the Gratcher monster can actually climb trees. So he's much more capable than they thought he was. They gave him credit for back in season one or two that they originally found him in with Trapper. And he even had a nice little flashback. This season's full of flashbacks. Most of them are for just from last year or two years ago in um, 2020 with season seven, but most some uh, um, are about Trapper also back in the day. And so then Terry has this weird theory that the Grafton monster is actually afraid of glow sticks, so he puts a bunch of glow sticks in his car. And that's when the Ames team starts to think Terry might be losing it a little bit. But he's not. He's just a, like, you know, good old man. And he was almost coming off as almost like a bad guy. Like, he was mad at the Ames team for not catching him right away. But then it turned out that, you know, he was just afraid for his livestock and his farm and whatnot. So they, the Grafton monster starts climbing roofs, he starts climbing trees. You know, it's just hectic out there for the AIM team on that old farm, Terry's farm. Uh, and that's when they just keep hearing more of these sounds, these loud roaring sounds throughout the season. Well, um, episode 3 is all about Willie constructing, I think, one of his traps, I believe. Yeah, the hillbilly ground lines, that is. Not really a trap, but nonetheless... Lots of fun. Um, oh yeah, and there's a couple of funny scenes also throughout there. Wild Bill <laughs> being loud and stuff. But I think there's a little too much Wild Bill in this season. Maybe. But, you know, he was a good character about things, so not too bad. Um, hmm. Then Wild Bill actually had to step in to become Buck's voice box. It seems that this season, the Ames team was not afraid to take some time off when they're sick. They've never really done that before, but three times. The only one that wasn't sick was Wild Bill. So, actually no, Wild Bill was sick. The only one that wasn't sick was Jeff. First off, it was Buck in episode two or three, I think three. And then, I believe Wild Bill was next to be sick, and they were talking about how quiet it was without him. And then, Huckleberry and Willie, obviously, is the most iconic one, because, of course, Willie got lost shortly after that. And so these sounds just, you know, keep ringing out throughout the Tiger Valley, and it raises the question, what's making these loud rumbling sounds? Right when I first heard about these sounds, I immediately thought, it's gotta be something coming, They're, they kept talking like an earthquake type sound, like, coming from the core of the earth. It's gotta be something big, you know, something's causing the sound. Almost like earth has erupted, they've even compared it to. Um, and then, then, 
on the weirdest things ever, kind of a callback to season seven, Willie and Jeff and Wild Bill, they hear this dog crying for help in the Tigard Valley. And we assume the dog met its maker, unfortunately. Or maybe it was a coyote. We don't really know, but they think it's a dog. Could have been. And, well, unfortunately, that dog didn't survive, probably. Most likely from a smoke wolf attack, or a Bigfoot, or even the Gotham Monster. We're not really sure at this point. It never really gets proven. But that just kind of, this season really is a lot about dogs. It relies heavily on trying to, I think, you know, appeal to a broader audience of fans. So yeah, the Ames team finds more mutilated cows throughout the season and whatnot. They find a lot of, uh, even some blood trails. So I don't know if that was from the dog. Or was that from the cows? It's kind of uncertain. Um, and then that's when Huckleberry stops the hunt. I think it's episode three or four. Huckleberry, this, this is episode four, Huckleberry's monster, I believe. Huckleberry just stops the hunt and he says, you know what guys, we gotta get home or we're back to base camp. I gotta tell you all something. And so obviously Huckleberry, when does he stop the hunt? Like mid hunt. That's, I think there's a lot of times in this season where the hunts just stop just randomly, just because this season, this is important obviously to stop the hunt. Most times it was just because the ancient is backing out. I'm like, guys, you gotta go after these monsters. You can't just say you're gonna, and then back out once you get there. It seems like there's a lot of that this season, but you know, there's also some good scenes. Unfortunately though, this season didn't include anything in a trap. It's like, what even happened to the trap? If the season ended, Willie's trap just gone. <laughs> so they it's, didn't catch anything at least. So the Huckleberry gets the AMS team together on uh, episode four, and he reveals some information about his past, about his dog, Bo. And it touched my heart when he was talking about his dog, because you know, I love dogs and whatnot. Um, I got a dog named Maya, as you all know. She's a golden retriever. And Huckleberry's dog, unfortunately, didn't make it out of the woods when he was out hunting with him with Huckleberry when Huckleberry was just a boy or maybe a little older than that I don't know but uh yeah and uh, it turns out he got ripped to shreds by I think a smoke wolf but I'm not really sure but that really entices Huckleberry to get out there and get those smoke wolves and you know just not give up so he ends up finding something he wants to tell the Ames team after he tells that story he goes to Trapper's box that well I forgot to mention in the beginning of the season, I believe, Trapper's daughter Laura gave him this shoe shine box and it had some more stuff about the Tiger Valley. It's basically like the journal of last season, of this season though. Uh, last season it was all heavily, it relied heavily on the journal from Trapper. This season relies heavily on this box, but also the journal as well. Um, this box has a lot in it, that's for sure. So Huckleberry realizes something in it. All these old pictures of Trapper in the Tiger Valley and I believe they're all dating back to like that. I believe 1984, which is the name of the ninth episode. And one picture actually has Trapper in the Tiger Valley with some guy and a dog who we can assume is Bo. And Bo, or Gus, sorry. Yeah, Trapper's dog is named Gus. And the Amstein put the puzzle pieces together because there was another, there's a collar in Trapper's box with the name Gus on it. None of them have ever heard of this dog named Gus. Trapper even has a dog graveyard, and none of them is marked with Gus. So, you know why? Because Gus was killed out there in the Tiger Valley. That's most likely why. So, the Ames team does a little scientist experiment, getting into forensics, the Ames team. That's where Jess Hillbilly Hazmat suit comes in. <laughs> Not sure what the point of that was. Actually, just for laughs. For laughs, I guess. <laughs> Wasn't really that funny. <laughs> but, I don't know. I guess. <laughs> Didn't really do anything that hazmat suit that jeff made but whatever um they're more for like a trailer scene and that was the first scene we got of the season was that behind the scenes um part with jeff and his hillbilly hazmat suit but anyways i was saying um so the team wants to know if gus which is assumingly trapper's dog um like no one knows about this dog so i find it hard to believe it was his but it must have been it was in a box, right? Maybe it was someone else's dog, though. Who knows? In the picture, to me, it didn't look like Trapper's too attached to the dog. It seemed like maybe it was the dog of that guy Trapper's with. But nonetheless, Gus was killed by some. Whoever's dog it is. Trapper's or not. 
And as sad as it is, most likely, it was probably from something in the Tiger Valley. Some kind of monster. Possibly smoke wolves. Possibly a grafter monster. Probably not a grafter monster because he wasn't migrated there at that time in the 80s. But it could even be a Bigfoot. Who knows? So the Ames team um, put some hydrogen peroxide on this blood. Or on the, the collar to see if there's any blood on it. Because it'll foam if, if there is blood on it. And it was foaming like crazy. So obviously... Poor Gus was killed out there in the Tiger Valley. And that was their little experiment. And that brings us in, I think, the episode... I think we're still on four or are we on five now? I don't know. I think maybe four. But anyways, Ames team, it was, they meet with another eyewitness named Brad. And let me tell you something. <laughs> if you thought Buck was fat <laughs> in the beginning of Seasons of Mountain Monsters, well, think again, because Brad is like double the size of, of Buck. <laughs> I assure you that. Now... Brad has a little interesting story, but it seems that as he's telling it, he's not really telling the full truth. The legend of Ron Goldschmidt, um, you know, just kind of a legend around the area in that Tigard Valley. And so basically, I guess it's a story of this guy named Ron. And he saw some kind of giant Bigfoot, assumingly, or some kind of monster way up on this hill. So at the place where he saw it, all these kids nowadays coming up there hooting and hollering like Brad said and the shining lights up that hill like like Ron did how many years ago I don't know when this occurred but I'm not really sure I'm assuming 1900s and uh, so yeah they're trying to attract whatever monster Ron saw so that's the thing kind of in that area of the Tiger Valley the legend of Ron Goldschmidt so now of course Buck and the team they all want to find out more more about this Ron more about this creature that he saw so, <laughs> um, well, this is where Wild Bill gets sick, and Buck does some impressions of Wild Bill. A little funny scene. But then Jeff catches something, you know, when they're out on the hunt, Wild Bill's not there. He's out being sick for some reason, I don't know, must have got a cold. They don't really specify why they're sick so many times throughout the season. Um, maybe they're just taking more protocols now, I don't know, after the Rona. Um, so Jeff catches something big on the thermal, and... You know, they're out hunting, they're trying to find that legend of Ron Goldschmidt Hill. Because there's really, like, Brad told them about where it's at, but he didn't say exactly. Yeah, like, there's really no exact estimate of where this Ron Goldschmidt sign, or they want to find the sign for the legend of Ron Goldschmidt. They find it eventually, but when they're trying to find it, they end up, um, I think they're split up. It's Huckleberry and Buck and Willie and Jeff together. And Jeff and Willie are in the blinds, I believe. On the hillbilly ground lines. And that's when they start getting shot at. Shots are fired at the AIM team. It's a pretty crazy scene. That's the end of the fourth episode. That was probably the biggest cliffhanger. That's one of my favorite scenes. Is when... Well, so, Buck approaches the people who are shooting. Not really at them. But they are just shooting. They're actually... They find out that they're shooting in the sky. Uh, I believe three shoots after dark. Signifies... That someone's lost. So, you know... When you're lost out in the woods, shoot three shoots after dark, someone will come find you, most likely. So they lost one of their, well, Buck thought it was one of their buddies. It's actually their dog named Randy. So it's all these juveniles. I don't know how old they are. Probably about 20 or whatnot. And they're out in the woods looking for their dog named Randy. I really thought that was, <laughs> I thought they were just um, making things up when they were telling that to Buck. But they're apparently not. They ended up to be all right guys, but... At first, they weren't so nice to the old aim scene. They ended up actually getting into a little scuffle. And that's how the, that episode ends. Puck approaches them. Because, they, you know, he wants to go help them. In case they lost one of their buddies or whatnot. Because someone could be hurt. And <laughs> that's when things go downhill real fast. Oh, <laughs> that's a great scene. It was real fun to watch that. They had a little scuffle. They had a little fight with the uh, juveniles. And then, so Buck goes over there. And they're not being very nice to Buck. They're saying, like, what's it to you? Um, yeah, we lost our dog. Basically, they think they're going to call the police because they're on the property. But really, Buck doesn't own the property anyways. <laughs> um, but they think he does. And they think he's going to call the call the old fuzz on him. And they don't want that, of course. They're just young. So Huckleberry comes in. Absolutely tears down the one guy. Like, pushes him right over. <laughs> Buck's got two guys <laughs> on the ground. And they're just going at it. That's a great fight scene right there probably the best scene in the whole season actually this brings me into my favorite episode episode five 
starts off with the fight. The fight, really, though, it was a cliffhanger. And when it ended, it wasn't as bad <laughs> as it as it looked. It was really just Buck Huckleberry and a couple juveniles all on the ground acting like worms. No one really got hurt or anything, as far as I know. Um, but Huckleberry is <laughs> in a lot of heat. He was pretty upset. Uh, he didn't want the cameraman to come film this, either. So they eventually let the juveniles up, and they ask, like, what were you guys doing out here? Like, really, we want to know. They said, we're really just looking for a dog. Um, but they weren't originally out there looking for the dog, obviously. But they originally came out there because they were looking for the land of the fallen trees. Buck assumed that they were some juveniles because they were looking up. They were trying to find the, um, the Legend of Ron Goldschmidt, which is what the Ames team was trying to find. But nope, they were actually trying to find this new place called the land of the fallen trees. So this, you know, leads Buck to wondering, what, what is the land of the fallen trees? And this brings us into Trapper's birthday. <laughs> um, nice little call back to Trapper, although he's really the highlight of every season now. <laughs> for better or for worse, I don't know. A lot of people love Trapper, so do I. But, you know, I think it's a little too much sometimes. But he's the heart and soul of the show, so I don't know. So the Ames team are celebrating Trapper's birthday. It's been about just over a year since he... Since he died and everything. So they're celebrating with some of Trapper's <laughs> Squatch Piss whiskey. So they're all drinking that. Um, Buck puts on Trapper's hat. They tell the exact same story that they told about the I'm Leaking story when Trapper leaks through his hat. As they told in Season 7. So I don't know why they thought they needed to tell that again. But we already knew that story, Buck. <laughs> Second time now. But they had some drinks on Trapper. They almost threw up. And then they went out, and that was a nice scene when they went out. Welcome to Appalachia, Buck says. And they, and they went out to find that Legend of Ron Goldschmidt sign now for the second time. And they weren't going to get distracted this time. Now, Buck obviously wants to know more about the land of the fallen trees. But he knows that they went out for a reason. And they want to find that Legend of Ron Goldschmidt sign. So Buck gets stuck in the, or Jeff gets stuck in the muck. <laughs> um, and then, as they're walking, they end up seeing all these fallen trees so this leads them to wondering is this the land of the fallen trees i don't know i think that actually ended up proving to be true that was the land of the fallen trees but buck's like you know what we gotta it's almost nightfall we gotta find this sign because we're not gonna get distracted again so i'm glad they didn't they didn't back out this time they didn't get distracted and they actually found the sign it was all in the mud while bill gave a little hillbilly bath and they found it, and Willie went up to the hill to try to measure how big that Bigfoot would have been if Ron was standing there, and it was pretty big Bigfoot. <laughs> so, this, um, I forget how, but they do end up finding out that there's more than one Bigfoot in this Tiger Valley. Um, because I believe, I forget who tells them, I think Brad tells them, because the next day they go out to meet with Brad again to talk around the campfire because Buck's like um he doesn't really truly believe that Brad told him everything he seemed like he was a little skeptical about telling him everything so it turns out Brad just comes out and says it there is more of my story you know so he tells him more and turns out Brad actually saw this thing back in 2003 or something I think or 2002 and he's never been the same since ever since he saw that you don't like to go in the woods too much anymore and, you know, just scarred him for life. Um, but he saw this giant Bigfoot and was staring right at him into his soul. He ran out of there back in the day. And, you know, he doesn't really like to tell that story much. I don't think he's ever told anyone because he's worried that no one will believe him and whatnot. But, of course, this is the Ames team, so they'll believe anything. And this is what... Oh, he actually had a recording of it. That's how they figure out there's two Bigfoots. Um, because... They actually hear evidence from Brad, who took that video. I believe this is not from 2002, the footage. This is more recent. Um, but Brad keeps hearing these things out in his backyard. He's never seen them again. But he did hear these Bigfoots. And they're actually recorded communicating to each other. So, pretty shocking evidence right there. And this is what leads the Ames team to get back out there. They want to find the land of the fallen trees. And they do find it. <laughs> um... Basically, they just find all these trees tacked up all around. Like, they're all down. And this is actually where Bigfoot is, like, one of his, I guess, pathways? I don't know. <laughs> I guess the Bigfoot was knocking them down. 
didn't understand that because they're pretty big trees. But this Bigfoot in the Tiger Valley seems to like to knock down trees. Instead of just knock on them, he likes to knock them down. <laughs> so then they have a little funny scene, um, like a fat boy chasing the ice cream truck. I got all these clips on the mountain by the way, so check them out on the season 8 playlist. Uh, I got little mini clips, so basically you can go watch almost the entire season on my channel, but they're just broken up into mini clips. To avoid copyright, of course. Um, and that's why Jeff says that, and it's pretty funny, like fat boy chasing the ice cream truck. But there's a lot of scenes where it's getting intense, and then it just dies down because for a funny scene. And sometimes they're not even funny, so it's a wasted moment. But, you know, what are you gonna do? Um, and this is when the next episode now, episode 6, I believe. Um, <laughs> while Willie and Wild Billy go in this, I forget what log it is, they go in some kind of log, a mysterious something. Yeah, some kind of mysterious log or something. I'm trying to look at these episodes remembering everything, but it's hard to remember at all. And they take a tumble, they go out of there, because, oh yeah, the, the monster was hiding in that log or something like that. And anyways, he ends up escaping out the back. I think it was the Bigfoot or something, I don't know. And <laughs> that's when they find all these, this little muddy creek, and it's filled with footprints, of Bigfoot footprints. So they do some tree knocks, can't be in a tree knock. Jeffro hurts himself, Huckleberry hurts himself. They're all trying to do tree knocks, and they all end up hurting themselves. And they realize the Ames team just sucks at tree knocks. Buck's pretty good. And it must be okay, because Bigfoot actually responds to them. At least the buck. Um, they got a little tree knock back. And this is when they realize they find another mutilated cow. Like I said, I can't take any more mutilated cows, but there's more to come. So this is not it. And mutilated pigs. And actually mutilated deer, if you can believe that. They find another one. Like, I don't know, like, who's letting their cows out? <laughs> I don't get it. How these cows keep escaping, first of all. So anyways, the next day, this is the next episode, episode 6. I am seeing mates with Jimmy. And Jimmy, I didn't think was too good of an eyewitness. He's like, he didn't even know how to talk. But he told them a story about this woolly jigger Bigfoot. And he actually knows friends. I don't think he actually saw Bigfoot. But he knows friends that have Bigfoot nests on their property. So, he doesn't know where it's at. But he knows that there's this giant Bigfoot nest. And he shows them this video of it. And, you know, the Ames team has to locate it. That's the only thing. That's going to be hard because all the vast land of the Tiger Valley, there's a giant Bigfoot nest in, in it somewhere, but they just have to find out where. So knowing the Ames theme, obviously they want to find these Bigfoot nests, and it's going to be near impossible to find them, or there's only one of them, it's a giant Bigfoot nest, bigger than anything they've ever seen. They saw it on, uh, on camera, but you know, that's not really going to do much, because they don't know where it's at. They have to locate it, and the guy who filmed it doesn't really want to talk about it, so they're not going to be able to talk to him, and they don't. We don't even know who he is. So, that leads the Ames team to get into a bit of technology. And they actually call producer Colt Straub over. And they ask him to bring a good old friend, Cowboy Ken. Now, they act like this guy's been on the show before. And I didn't think he was, but he actually was. In season 6, one of the first episodes, possibly the first, I just rewatched it and I saw him. Cowboy Ken actually appears in that episode. You know, he doesn't have a big part, but he, I did believe he's using a laptop. And the Ames team asks him to borrow it. Basically, he works behind the scenes on the show. He flies to drones. So he's a newer worker on the show. Because they didn't always use drones. It's more of a, I think, season 6 that started. So he's been on the show for a little while. But not too long. About 4 years. <coughs> oh, hey there, man. Maybe about 4 years he's been on the show. Um, but yeah, they find a Bigfoot that tore the tree down. This old dead tree. And... That was one of the scenes from the trailer, actually. That's when they have to be cautious. They go out to where that Bigfoot tore that tree down. And they find it, sure enough. Big dead tree toppled over. So Cowboy Ken actually joins the hunt a little. I thought he was going to be like a... I almost thought he might even join the Ames team, but obviously that didn't happen. Kind of glad it didn't. You know, I don't really want another team member unless they really add something new. Cowboy Ken, I don't know if he adds enough to the team. Um... And he actually becomes Buck's protege. So they end up doing tree knocks again. I'm a little tired of tree knocks at this point. But the, um, the Cowboy Ken joins him. And that was his dream. To, to do a tree knock with the Ames team. And he does. He follows in Buck's footsteps. Like um, shaking his... 
tail feather, <laughs> just like in season six, which Buck did. Um, and that's when Huckleberry comes across as creepy honey locust. Um, names team, and just keep going on, and then eventually, yeah, they didn't find it yet. That's when they find this this giant Bigfoot nest. They finally find it. Um, they call Willie and Bill to come over. Oh yeah, because names team split up. I forgot about that. Willie, Bill, and Cowboy Ken were together, and then Buck, Huck, and Jeff, so they're a bit split up for the point. And that's when Wild Bill actually hears something farting, or possibly going to the bathroom out there in the in the woods, and hears him cut the cheese. That's a funny clip I put on. Um, and they think it's a big bear, but then again, why wouldn't it be a Bigfoot? Then they end up finding a giant load of, uh, giant load of the squirts, Squatch had the case of the squirts, I guess. Absolutely disgusting. And Bill's just, like I said, infatuated with it. He's just, when he gets, when he likes something, he really hooks onto it. Technology and eating snacks, which comes up later in the season. And even Bear Scat, I guess. Or Bigfoot Scat. Bigfoot Scat. So, yeah, while Bill continues his obsession for Scat. So, um, the team hides in the blind while Bill and Willie and Cowboy can, and that's when they all meet up again, and while Bill reenacts the Squatch doing the squirts. Not a pleasant sight, but it was quite funny. So the next day, um, this eyewitness named Rick, Ames meets, Ames team meets with him because he's had some coyote trouble, um, lately. And I don't know if he has a farm or not, he's just meeting in the middle of the woods. But nonetheless, his coyote, or all these coyotes, they're all like sounding like each night he comes out here and he listens and they're just howling at the moon and then as soon you know just randomly stop and they stop and they don't you know no more howling just weirdest thing ever i hear them all the time doing the same thing though so i don't know if that's too too out there to have those coyotes howling all the time but i hear them a lot and that's when jeff has to be a good boy <laughs> and um buck does some coyote calls that's just a little funny scene Good old Jeffro having to be a good boy, he says, so that he can use Buck's coyote collar. So, Mames team's out there doing coyote calls, and that's when they realize that they are now in no man's land. I think this might be, yeah, I believe well, um, Huckleberry and Willie are now out at this point in the season. This is episode six or seven now, I think. I'm forgetting the names of these episodes. But nonetheless, they find no man's land again. They realize that that's where they're at. I don't know how like that would clue in that you're in the area, but whatever. They find the the giant wing wall, which is actually grown in size and gotten even scarier. And um, that's when they just back down once again. Huckleberry, or because Huck and Buck and Willie aren't there, so Buck, Jeff, and Wild Bill just back down and said we can't go in no man's land without them. Huck's our security and whatnot. So the next day, I had a little fun and games. This episode's like very dry on the monster hunting and relies heavily on the laughs, which aren't always funny, but this part was pretty funny. Wild Bill ends up saying, which he's done before, that he needs to lose some weight. And he's, I mean, he's not really bad, I wouldn't say, but he obviously did put on a couple pounds. Buck's wanted to talk. Buck says he, he looks like a, he swallowed a basketball. Meanwhile, Buck, I know you lost some weight, but you're still... Nowhere close to being skinny. <laughs> like, nowhere. Nowhere at all. Um, so that was a little ironic, I felt. <laughs> I don't know. Like, Buck making fun of Wild Bill for being overweight? I don't think so. But nonetheless, good old Wild Bill. Knew how to laugh at it. And didn't take it to heart. So Wild Bill did some Squatch Watch. And that's when he asked Buck, what's the secret to losing weight? So, <laughs> this just turns out to be just a funny scene. Wild Bill has no interest in losing weight, I don't think. Um, and he shows, this is when Wild Bill shows Buck his daily diet. So, some, we got some Squatch Jerky, we got some Squatch Soda, which is really just Coca-Cola, and Squatch Jerky bought off the side of the road, like, just, come on, they had some copyright co issues there, <laughs> Buck said, maybe. Um, this, Buck just realizes, obviously, Wild Bill's putting those snacks away too hard. Too many of those snacks. They gotta lean off the snacks. That was really just meant to be funny, that scene, because, uh, most of the Ames team wasn't even there. Or two members. So the next day, or later on that day, um, the three members of the Ames team 
Wild Bill, Jeff, and Buck. They go to meet this deer hunter named Travis. And they're talking <laughs> right off the bat. Crazy talk. Jeff was talking about his noobs and his gesticles. You can only imagine what that is. I won't go into detail, though. <laughs> and Travis tells him about how some buddies of his have been finding these disturbing kill sites with deer with no heads and some body of deer. Um, like the opposite. They got some bodies, they got some heads. But either or, either one's missing. So kind of random, kind of weird that whatever creature killed them would do that. Would just leave the head or leave the body. Um, and that's when they hear another rumbling sound. So they go to investigate and I'll leave this into the eighth episode. Where one of the, I would argue that one of the best scenes of the show, well not my favorite scene, but a lot of people do love the scene. Uh, Wild Bill can't pronounce. So Jeff uses um, this this app, which I've never seen the Ames team use an app before. They're really getting technological there, the old Ames team. And um, they're going to investigate, obviously, where that sound came from. Travis allowed them. He didn't care. Go out and find whatever's there, he said. And <laughs> Wild Bill can't, he can't say, I believe it's Chipalapa. Like, it's not that word, not that hard to say. It's a place in Ecuador. And that's where one of the earthquakes was, I guess. But there is no, because the, the app is meant to track earthquakes. And there's no earthquakes around. So obviously, the rules out that. No earthquakes around. So what was that sound then? And then they start seeing water, water rippling in, the, in this little pond. Or this little puddle. And they, they end up realizing that, you know, there's something doing this. Making all these rumbling sounds. And then something big. So later on in the night, they go out hunting for the whatever creature made this sound but it turns out it probably wasn't a creature after all and they end up going back to willie's log where buck has to go in even if there's snake skins which he's deathly afraid of snakes and spiders in there and um that's when they come across a massive tree structure again there's so many tree structures in this season i, I kind of forgot to mention some of them because they don't really add much to the story of the season but they do move it along a little and this is when randomly out of the blue Brother Willie, oh, this is episode 9, sorry. Um, I forgot. This is when Brother Willie, who's, you know, out for being sick right now, or like a whole episode now, same with Huck, just randomly pages him. And he's like, hey, I'm here. He was talking a little weird, but not too weird at this point. And he's, you know, like, you guys need some backup? Because I'm here, I'm ready to help. So, obviously, they're like, if you're feeling up to it, please, we need help. Because <laughs> um, they're in a little predicament out there in the woods. But then randomly like as they're they're getting scared by monsters and whatnot screaming and yelling willie pages again and he's like well oh, you're supposed to meet him at the parking lot he was supposed to no he's supposed to go to the parking lot so that he could get to um oh the log yeah because in order to get to that willie's log he had to go to that parking lot but he pages again and when he's talking he's you know not all there when he's talking He's slurring his words, and he just don't sound like Brother Willie. He's repeating sentences, and then randomly, out of the blue, he says, Red eyes beyond the pines. <laughs> and that was on the clips I put on. Um, but, so, Buck and Jeff and Willie split, or Wild Bill split up. Jeff and Wild Bill go to the log to see, I think, Willie's there. And Buck goes to the parking lot to see if Willie's there. Because, obviously, something's wrong with Willie. He's not acting right. Not in the right state of mind. So, but this, you know, downhill ride from here. Buck starts finding things. He finds Willie's light. He finds Willie's radio. Where is Willie? You know, no one can find Willie. So they end up meeting up. Buck goes to the parking lot. He can't find him. He still can't find Willie. So he meets up with um, Wild Bill and Jeff again. He's like, I still can't find him. It's not good. So they end up going. They find all these pines. And they're like, is that where Willie is? Beyond the pines? So sure enough, that's where Willie was. And they start hearing gunshots. And that was Willie, I guess, before he went down. Willie was not in a good state of mind when they found him. He was all shook up. He looked like he had that frizzy hair look like he did in Season 7 again. Uh, when that Bigfoot came trampling by. I forgot to mention that Bigfoot in Season 7 that went trampling by was the same Bigfoot, likely, that went trampling by through the um, land of the fallen trees. By the way, I forgot to mention that. This is where I ended off last, putting these uploads on. I ended up right around here, but I'm going to put them all on up until the end of season, or episode 10 of season 8. I'm going to put them all on for the mini clips series. And so the next day, Willie comes out to the campfire and he talks with the team. But, you know, he's not all there. He's, he didn't know what happened. He pissed himself. 
you know, he's, he's not doing good. He ends up being all right, and he realizes that whatever made him do that to himself, like, you know, be in that state of mind, he's going to catch it. So, this is when they start working on the trap. And, unfortunately, this is when the Ames team <laughs> takes their shirts off and starts building the trap. So, Buck, luckily, Buck doesn't. Um, but Buck goes to meet them as they're building the trap. Willie's back to normal. <laughs> and this trap is just ginormous. But, then again, like, the season ends... And they don't even go back to the trap. You know, the trap catches nothing. I don't even know what the point of the trap was. <laughs> I guess we'll find out next season, hopefully. I'm assuming they already filmed the next season. So, you know, they probably did it all at once. That's what I'm saying. They dragged it out. So they could have filmed it all in one year. Season 8 and 9, probably. Um, but I don't have any episodes to reference right now. So I just gotta remember exactly what happened in the rest of these last two episodes. Um, but basically... Oh, yeah. So, um, the next episode, they meet with Dave, the Ames team, after building the trap. I believe, tell me if I missed anything in the comments. But, um, yeah, they meet with Dave from last season. Remember the, the, the Crocodile Dundee, Dave? The Hillbilly Crocodile Dundee? Oh, that's what Buck calls him. So, he meets with the Ames team again because he wants to talk. He did not know, like, last season, he didn't know who the Ames team was. He didn't know what Mountain Monsters was. He never heard of it, somehow, by the hard belief. Um... But after, you know, after being on the show, he didn't, that's not what he signed up to, he didn't sign up to be on the show. He just, you know, wanted to talk to these guys, they wanted to talk to him about this land. That, that's his land, obviously. Um, last season, when they found those speakers in the trees, and uh, obviously the skull wall, that giant scary wall, with the, the antlers on it and stuff, you know, not, not very pretty stuff right there. Um, so Dave meets with them, and he wants to tell them. Didn't know who you guys were, but guess what? I know who Trapper was. He's your team leader, and I know. I knew him. So back when Dave was 14, believe it or not, in the Tiger Valley, he actually met Trapper. Trapper was out with working with Dave's dad, I believe, and he was drilling for oil. So that's, that's obviously what those rumbling sounds were coming from, because Trapper dug so deep that he hit something. And we don't know. We never find out what he hit until next season. But whatever it is, obviously unleashed something. I'm assuming he hit some kind of cave system where the monsters were living and then the monsters came out. And that's what's causing the sound, that all those, you know, that cave system. That's where the rumbling sound's coming from. That's what I'd assume. Um, so, you know, this is just mind-blowing information that... It's just mind-blowing information that Dave shared with the Ames team. And it just, uh, it's just weird, uh, you know. Last time he met him, about a year before, you know, didn't even know. Didn't, know, didn't even know who the Ames team was. None of that. Um, but yeah. That pretty much concludes the season. Other than the last little part here. When Cold Straub calls the Ames team back together. On that same dirt road where. Remember he called them in season 7. and uh, Or the same gravel road I should say. That's where. Um, he called them to get together. To show them that there was two red eyes. Right behind the buckaroo. Because um, remember, Buck thought he hit a dog with his car. And it turns out, maybe he did. But this time, he calls him back because he wants to tell him about something else he found. So, well, not him, but um, the team behind Mountain Monsters, people who make the show, back in Los Angeles, they were looking at this uh, footage from the one of the drone footage that Cowboy Ken filmed. And, believe it or not, <laughs> there was a Bigfoot walking. And you can see a good aerial shot of them. Now, I found it kind of hard to see. Now, if you guys could see it better, I gotta zoom in a lot later and watch it again. Because, I don't know. From from far away, it looks like, yeah, I don't know what it is. But close up, maybe it is a big Who knows? Imagine that. But it wasn't as <laughs> groundbreaking as I'd say they thought it was. They made it seem like it was going to be to the episode description. But, yeah, I mean, other than that... There was also, oh yeah, something else that he found, which is actually the first thing he found, was he, they, they found Trapper's uh, Pathfinder symbol on some old building out in the middle of the Tiger Valley woods. So Ames team was pretty shocked to see that as well. That's pretty much how it ended. Uh, I believe right then and there. Just in the back of Gold Straub's truck on that gravel road, Ames team being shocked. So I guess that means that next season who knows what we'll be getting into. 
but I imagine it's the same type of storyline. But maybe it'll be like half the season, and then I'll transition to something else. Because I can't see them staying in the Tiger Valley for a whole nother season now. It's three seasons. Just, I don't know, like, don't know how much more is there. Once they find out exactly what Trevor unleashed that day when he drilled into the mines, or the cave system, or whatever he drilled into, we really don't know. <laughs> um, and whenever they... Well, they're not going to catch a big boat, let's just be honest. Um, but if they did, then that would be pretty cool. But that's for next season. Something to look forward to. So yeah, guys, I mean, that's pretty much all i got to say. We talked quite a bit about Mount Monster Season 8. It was a damn fine season, that's for sure. I really did enjoy it, and I know I said a couple bad things about it, just for being a little bit on the lazier side, I think. But I don't think it's a problem with the Ames team. I think it's more the writers. Um, it was still a great season. I just feels like once again, like I said, they're trying to drag it out. I, don't know. I feel like once this Tiger Valley story is finished and solved, like in season nine or ten, I don't know if there'll be another season. I really don't. But you know me, I'm hoping so. I just don't know like what else they could tell, what other story they could tell. But they're the Ames team, and you know they're gonna find something to hunt, right? Whether that be a Snally Gaster or a Midnight Whistler. I really was convinced that the Midnight Whistler was the Bigfoot Brad saw. But once again, we really never found out what Bigfoot Brad saw. So a couple things still unanswered in Season 8. And, I mean, things I would have liked answered. But I feel like they could have wrapped up the whole Tiger Valley story in this season. And now we got, like, probably another season to go now. If Mountain Monsters never comes back. And we don't get a ninth season then that's gonna really suck but i honestly don't think so you know i imagine they already have it filmed or maybe they'll start filming this spring i don't know how, how early in advance they film that monsters but i don't think they film it that early in advance i don't think it's like three years in advance or anything like that obviously um i think it's only about probably just like over just over like half a year i'd say i think they film it in the spring and they put it out in the early winter that's what i'd say but I don't know, I don't work behind the scenes of the show or nothing. I'm just a mountain man, just a YouTuber. But, yeah, like I said, thanks for watching, guys. Hope you all enjoyed this season. I did enjoy it a lot. It was still a great season. And, let me, give me a pour on the chat. Give me, tell me what y'all want to see in a season 9. Would you want more Tiger Valley? Am I the only one that really doesn't want to see it anymore? Just a little tired of it, but it's still... Still a great place, and it's got a ton of monsters, so I guess you can't really complain about that. So, uh, let me know what y'all thought of my review. Well, maybe I should rate it, actually. If I had to rate this season... Well, let's rate all the seasons, actually. I would say season 6 is definitely my favorite. Season 5, probably 2nd. Season 4, 3rd. Then I'd probably say season 8 is number 4, maybe? But then season 7... And season three, two, one, because you know, season one and two don't really have. Well, season two actually has a ton of episodes, but I just prefer like the storyline to Mountain Monsters, and the newer seasons how they actually have storylines. Yeah, I prefer the ones with the storylines better in the more recent seasons instead of each episode featuring a new monster and you know, kind of forget the one that came before that kind of thing. You know, like when Trapper found that that Bigfoot graveyard, you know, the next episode, then we don't talk about it again. That's the kind of thing I'm talking about with the older seasons, but they're really, they're classics. You can't argue with them. Um, but anyways, guys, thanks for watching, and keep watching the mountain man because I got more clips to come from season eight, and then after season eight, all finished with the clips, I'm gonna be putting on some clips from the earlier seasons, like five, six, seven, and my good buddy Swift on another YouTube channel. He's putting on seasons one to four clips, uh, just mini clips though for now to avoid that old copyright. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching. Hope y'all enjoyed. Um, yeah. Keep watching Mountain Monsters. Hoorah! We're gonna catch a monster.